what's hurting Eagles in Northern Michigan and how you can help reverse the trend. We are previewing tonight's State of the Union address. See which local sheriff will be representing Northern Michigan in our nation's capital. Plus, the new changes that racers need to know and plan for at this year's North American VASA. This is Up North Live News, today on 7 and 4. Good morning. It's 6 o'clock. We have a long list of school closings. Mark, some districts are saying the roads are just too slick to send the kids to class today. Very understandable. We've had some rain mixed with snow overnight. Uh, most of the precipitation is now passing us, but it's still coming down in a few neighborhoods. And what's left behind are some wet and possibly icy roads. It looks icy and Cadillac, doesn't it, with that reflection? There's some new snow on the bridge. It's tough to tell. It wasn't much, but it could be slippery there as well. Petoskey's kind of dark, but they've had some snow there. And you can see what the wind's doing the flag there in Traverse City. So uh, not necessarily, a, you know, a chilly morning because temperatures are in the neighborhood of freezing. It could be a lot colder. We know that from last week. But since it's around freezing, watch your footing. It, it's wet and it could be icy this morning. Things will improve through the day as the precipitation, rain or snow, moves out of the area. And the temperatures later today climb above freezing. That snow to the north, there's a bit of rain to the south. And right in there, especially I-75 eastward. I think that's where the ice is more likely to be right now because it's a little colder there. But eventually highs do climb, temperatures climb above the freezing level later today. So it'll be in the 40s in some spots later on. And tonight skies try to clear and the wind dies down. We need to keep an eye on Thursday. Thursday, we get another storm coming into the Great Lakes region. I'll explain what's gonna happen in a few minutes. Now you're taking a live look at road conditions on the My Drive map. The yellows, oranges, and reds show where traffic is moving slower. And we've seen most of the issues, especially along I-75. This map shows the main road, so you can see where you live and where you're heading. And if you need to give yourself a little extra time today, and Garrett, if you can keep panning up to the uh, Upper Peninsula as well, you can see, yeah, again, I-75 seems to be the major issue, but uh, there seems to be some uh, slowdowns in the UPM-75 as well. So we'll be taking another look at this map in our next half hour. In other news, 16 years after America's national bird was removed from the endangered species list, the population of eagles is once again being affected. Up North Live's My Angle looks into what's causing this and what we can do to help. The bald eagle is the national symbol of the United States. And for many, eagles represent strength, freedom, and immortality. But an increased exposure to a toxic material is causing a threat for these magnificent creatures. 48 to 50 percent of bald and gold eagles in the United States are carrying chronic levels of lead. In 2022, the Skigamog Raptor Center in Traverse City began testing eagles that were admitted for rehabilitation. 75 to 80 percent of them had some level of lead poisoning. So what we're seeing is that even if lead isn't killing them outright, it's affecting their ability to hunt and they're more likely to get in vehicle coll collisions because it affects their cognitive function. So how are eagles coming into contact with lead? The main contributing factor to lead poisoning is from lead ammunition. An animal that wasn't recovered during the hunting season, deer for instance, and there could be bullet fragments in there that they may ingest. And it doesn't take much to affect an eagle. For instance, a number six uh, BB in like a, a shotgun pellet, um, th that is enough to kill five to six eagles. Lead fishing gear also poses a threat. Eagles will uh, eat a lot of fish and uh, um, sometimes there's um, you know, sinkers or fishing lures that might be in there. And although the population of eagles has been making a comeback. 1970, where we had about 75 breeding pairs in Michigan to currently we have uh, over 800 breeding pairs. Lead poisoning is slowing down the population growth. The lead is suppressing that by about 3.8%. So what will it take to help solve this man-made problem? A man-made solution. And the biggest thing we can do is for hunters to lead the way to be able to switch to copper, copper alloy, and different types of ammunition that don't have lead. In Grand Traverse County, Maya Engel, Up North Live News. In 2019, California became the first state to outright ban lead bullets. Here in Michigan, there are no restrictions on the use of lead fishing tackle or ammunition, although the DNR recommends you use non-toxic alternatives. In national news, we'll be taking you live to the U.S. Capitol. That's where later today, President Biden will deliver the State of the Union address. NBC's Bree Jackson has a preview. 
President Biden preparing to deliver his State of the Union address tonight. I'll let them know the state of affairs, what's going on, why, what I'm looking forward to working on from this point on, what we've done. Touting accomplishments including record low unemployment, rebuilding the nation's infrastructure, and lowering prescription drug prices, while making changes to address the challenges, such as rising tensions with China after the U.S. shot down their surveillance balloon. We're not going to back off. We did the right thing. Facing a divided Congress, the president will call for bipartisanship. He's going to talk about how we can finish the job and how we can keep getting things done over the next two years. Republicans launching a series of investigations ranging from Mr. Biden's handling of classified documents to the influx of immigrants crossing the southern border. The number of illegal immigrants who cross our border in just two years easily exceeds the population of 25 states. The latest NBC News poll shows the president's approval rating sits at just 45 percent, sinking to 36 percent when it comes to his handling of the economy. The way the administration is now is not taking care of ourselves and our own people. He's done as much as he can with the cards that he's been dealt. Tonight, the president will send a message directly to the American public about his vision for the country and his political future. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. We asked Michigan Republican Congressman Jack Bergman what he hopes the president will address in the State of the Union. I hope he addresses the fact that, uh, number one, COVID's been over for a long time, okay? But the other thing, I'd really like to see him uh, address the root causes of inflation, which is a government that prints money, spends money, and then devalues. When you have too much money in the, in the system, the value of your home, the value of your 401k, the value of your weekly paycheck is less than what it could or should be. Mason County Sheriff Kim Cole will attend tonight's State of the Union address. He was invited by Congressman John Molinar. Cole has served in the Mason County Sheriff's Office for nearly four decades and has been sheriff since 2013. Molinar said he invited Sheriff Cole because of his dedication to public service and keeping people in Mason County safe. You can watch President Biden's second State of the Union address tonight right here on Upper Live TV 7 and 4. The team at NBC will have live coverage and real-time analysis. It all starts at 9 p.m. The weather is affecting this year's North American Vasa Festival of Races. The event was scheduled to include two days of skiing, snowshoeing, and fat tire biking. But due to the warm weather affecting the trails, Saturday's events will run on a revised course, and all of Sunday's events are canceled. Those who have already registered for Sunday can transfer their registration to Saturday, ask for a refund, or donate their registration. There's new birthing support now being covered by Medicaid in our state. A Northern Michigan organization is ready to meet the growing need for doulas. Doulas are non-clinical trained professionals who provide physical, emotional, and informational support to pregnant women. The Great Start Collaborative of Charlevoix, Emmett, and Antrim counties is hosting its first doula training series this May. The training costs about $700. Scholarships are available. If you're interested in registering for the class, we'll post that information on UpperThive.com. Now you're taking a live look in Turkey. That's where cleanup is underway and rescuers are racing to find survivors following a 7.8 magnitude earthquake in both Turkey and Syria. The death toll now stands at nearly 5,000 people. Countries around the world dispatch teams to help in the rescue efforts. Crews are dealing with frigid temperatures and close to 200 aftershocks, which made the search through unstable buildings difficult. The region sits on top of major fault lines and is frequently shaken by earthquakes. Crews in Ohio have released toxic chemicals from five cars of a drilled train. It's an effort to reduce the threat of an explosion. Ohio's governor ordered people near the site to evacuate because of the risk of death or serious injury. Officials believe most have left. Flames and black smoke billowed high into the sky from the derailment site, as you can see on your screen. Norfolk Southern Railway confirmed Monday the cars were draining and that burning was underway as planned. Authorities were taking a look at air quality to make sure toxic fumes were not spreading. Now closer to home, a Northern Michigan after school club collects shoes from inspirational people around the world. It's in hopes of inspiring students to value themselves and others. These newly donated shoes are from Dolly Parton. She wore these shoes while recording her new rock and roll, rock and roll album. The East Jordan Middle School Shoe Club's goals are to dream big, work hard, and give back to the community. 
So when the kids joined the club, they gave me one of their shoes and I displayed it in my classroom. Then a few years ago, I thought, man, it would be really cool to get some shoes from people who dream big, set goals, work hard, and give back as role models for my students. The shoe club has about 160 shoes, ranging from athletes to astronauts. A reminder for latest news, weather, and sports, go to our website, upnorthlive.com. Valentine's Day is just around the corner and it's time to get some sweets for your sweetheart. And spoiler alert, we're not suggesting a Hershey bar. We'll show you what I mean after the break. A couple of things to show you on the travel map. Rain and snow this morning making things wet and possibly some ice outside. And that goes by very quickly later this morning. And there's some more precipitation approaching us very early Thursday. So Thursday's another day we need to watch another storm comes into the Great Lakes region. So wherever you are this morning, it's definitely wet. Could be icy. Temperatures here in northern Michigan are around freezing in some towns, so watch your footing as you head out the door. We'll talk more about what's going to happen for the rest of the day, and we'll talk more about that storm that comes in on Thursday in a few minutes.